Peter Sloterdijk, German, Slow T. Dach, born 26 June 1947, is a German philosopher and cultural theorist. He is a professor of philosophy and media theory at the University of Art and Design Karlsruhe. He co-hosted the German television show I'm Glasshaus, Das Philosophische Quartet from 2002 until 2012. Biography <inaudible> <inaudible> Sloterdijk's father was Dutch, his mother German. He studied philosophy, German studies and history at the University of Munich and the University of Hamburg from 1968 to 1974. In 1975 he received his PhD from the University of Hamburg. In the 1980s he worked as a freelance writer, and published his Critik der Zynischen Vernunft in 1983. He has since published a number of philosophical works acclaimed in Germany. In 2001 he was named Chancellor of the University of Art and Design Karlsruhe, part of the Center for Art and Media Karlsruhe. His best-known Karlsruhe student and former assistant is MDB member of German Parliament, Dr. Mark Jongen. In 2002 Sloterdijk began to co-host I'm Glasshaus, Das Philosophische Quartet. In the Glass House, the Philosophical Quartet. A show on the German ZDF television channel devoted to discussing key contemporary issues in depth. Topic. Philosophical stance Sloterdijk rejects the existence of dualisms—body and soul, subject and object, culture and nature, etc.—since their interactions, spaces of coexistence, and common technological advancement create hybrid realities. Sloterdijk's ideas are sometimes referred to as posthumanism, and seek to integrate different components that have been, in his opinion, erroneously considered detached from each other. Consequently, he proposes the creation of an ontological constitution that would incorporate all beings humans, animals, plants, and machines. Philosophical <laughs> style <laughs> 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 In the style of Nietzsche, Sloterdijk remains convinced that contemporary philosophers have to think dangerously and let themselves be kidnapped by contemporary hyper-complexities. They must forsake our present humanist and nationalist world for a wider horizon at once ecological and global. Sloterdijk's philosophical style strikes a balance between the firm academicism of a scholarly professor and a certain sense of anti-academicism witness his ongoing interest in the ideas of Osho, of whom he became a disciple in the late 70s. Taking a sociological stance, Andreas Dorschel sees Sloterdijk's timely innovation at the beginning of the 21st century in having introduced the principles of celebrity into philosophy. Sloterdijk himself, viewing exaggeration to be required in order to catch attention, describes the way he presents his ideas as hyperbolic, hyperbolish. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Individual works. Topic: <laughs> 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 Critique of cynical reason. The Critik der Zynischen Vernunft, published by Surkamp in 1983 and in English as Critique of Cynical Reason, 1988, became the best-selling work on philosophy in the German language since the Second World War and launched Sloterdijk's career as an author. <laughs> Spheres The trilogy Spheres is the philosopher's magnum opus. The first volume was published in 1998, the second in 1999, and the last in 2004. The trilogy is notoriously erudite in its scope, but Sloterdijk is aware his books are not for everyone. This becomes clear in the introduction to the trilogy, where Sloterdijk writes about Plato's Academy which allegedly denied anyone access who was not a mathematician, or a very precise scientist. However, to make clear that his book was written out of love for humanity and to find common ground, he cites the other rule of Plato's Academy, anyone had to stay out who was not willing to enter into love affairs with other students. To underline this he notes that, "...whomever turns away from Eros deprives himself of the vital form." Aside from that his writings were conceived because of his love for philosophy, which he regards highly, as the best thing there is even. If philosophy is regarded as something exclusive it's only because people deny for themselves the best." And lastly the books were written to express his rich and detailed worldview succinctly, hoping it would enable others to enrich their own. 
the boundaries of what I'm able to express or, of what I'm able to transmit are the boundaries of my world. If I were to keep anyone away from my trilogy it would only be those who are not willing to transmit what they have learned or experienced in order to subsequently lessen loneliness." Spheres is about "...spaces of coexistence." Spaces commonly overlooked or taken for granted that conceal information crucial to developing an understanding of the human. The exploration of these spheres begins with the basic difference between mammals and other animals, the biological and utopian comfort of the mother's womb, which humans try to recreate through science, ideology, and religion. From these microspheres ontological relations such as fetus placenta to macrospheres macro uteri such as nations or states, Sloterdijk analyzes spheres where humans try but fail to dwell and traces a connection between vital crisis e.g., emptiness and narcissistic detachment and crises created when a sphere shatters. Sloterdijk has said that the first paragraphs of spheres are the book that Heidegger should have written, a companion volume to being and time, namely being and space." He was referring to his initial exploration of the idea of Dasein, which is then taken further as Sloterdijk distances himself from Heidegger's positions. <laughs> Globalization Sloterdijk also argues that the current concept of globalization lacks historical perspective. In his view it is merely the third wave in a process of overcoming distances the first wave being the metaphysical globalization of the Greek cosmology and the second the nautical globalization of the 15th century. The difference for Sloterdijk is that, while the second wave created cosmopolitanism, the third is creating a global provincialism. Sloterdijk's sketch of a philosophical history of globalization can be found in I'm Weltinnenraum des Capitals 2005, translated as In the World Interior of Capital, subtitled Die letzte Kugel. The final sphere. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Rage and Time. In his Zorn und Zeit, translated as Rage and Time, Sloterdijk characterizes the emotion of rage as a psychopolitical force throughout human history. The political aspects are especially pronounced in the Western tradition, beginning with the opening words of Homer's Iliad. Of the rage of Achilles, son of Peleus, sing, O goddess. Sloterdijk acknowledges the contributions of psychoanalysis for our understanding of strong emotional attitudes. In conformity with its basic erotodynamic approach, psychoanalysis brought much hatred to light, the other side of life. Rage and time, p. 14. Importantly, for Sloterdijk, Judeo Christian conceptions of God ultimately piggyback on the feelings of rage and resentment, creating "...metaphysical revenge banks." For Sloterdijk, "...God thus becomes the location of a transcendent repository of suspended human rage savings and frozen plans of revenge." <laughs> <laughs> Genetics dispute Shortly after Sloterdijk conducted a symposium on philosophy and Heidegger, he stirred up controversy with his essay, Regeln für den Menschenpark, Rules for the Human Park. In this text, Sloterdijk regards cultures and civilizations as anthropogenic hothouses, installations for the cultivation of human beings, just as we have established wildlife preserves to protect certain animal species, so too ought we to adopt more deliberate policies to ensure the survival of Aristotle's Zoon Politikon. The taming of man has failed. Sloterdijk laments. Civilization's potential for barbarism is growing, the everyday bestialization of man is on the increase. Because of the eugenic policies of the Nazis in Germany's recent history, such discussions are seen in Germany as carrying a sinister load. Breaking a German taboo on the discussion of genetic manipulation, Sloterdijk's essay suggests that the advent of new genetic technologies requires more forthright discussion and regulation of biocultural reproduction. In the eyes of Habermas, this made Sloterdijk a fascist. Sloterdijk replied that this was, itself, resorting to fascist. Tactics to discredit him, the core of the controversy was not only Sloterdijk's ideas but also his use of the German words Zuchtung, breeding, cultivation, and selection, selection. Sloterdijk rejected the accusation of Nazism, which he considered alien to his historical context. 
Still, the paper started a controversy in which Sloterdijk was strongly criticized, both for his alleged usage of a fascist rhetoric to promote Plato's vision of a government with absolute control over the population, and for committing a non-normative, simplistic reduction of the bioethical issue itself. This second criticism was based on the vagueness of Sloterdijk's position on how exactly society would be affected by developments in genetic science. After the controversy multiplied positions both for and against him, Die Zeit published an open letter from Sloterdijk to Habermas in which he vehemently accused Habermas of "...criticizing behind his back," and espousing a view of humanism that Sloterdijk had declared dead. <laughs> <laughs> Welfare state dispute Another dispute emerged after Sloterdijk's article, "...die Revolution der Gebenden Hand." 13 13th of June 2009 Transl The Revolution of the Giving Hand in the Frankfurter Allgemeine one of Germany's most widely read newspapers Their Sloterdijk claimed that the national welfare state is a fiscal kleptocracy that had transformed the country into a swamp of resentment and degraded its citizens into mystified subjects of tax law Sloterdijk opened the text with the famous quote of leftist critics of capitalism made famous in the 19th century by Proudhon in his What is property? Property is theft. Stating, however, that it is nowadays the modern state that is the biggest taker. We are living in a fiscal-grabbing semi-socialism, and nobody calls for a fiscal civil war. He repeated his statements and stirred up the debate in his articles titled Kleptocratie des Stadies. Transl. Kleptocracy of the State, and Aufbruch der Leistungsträger, Transl. Uprising of the Performers, in the German monthly Cicero, magazine für politische Kultur. According to Sloterdijk, the institutions of the welfare state lend themselves to a system that privileges the marginalized, but relies, unsustainably, on the class of citizens who are materially successful. Sloterdijk's provocative recommendation was that income taxes should be deeply reduced, the difference being made up by donations from the rich in a system that would reward higher givers with social status. Achievers would be praised for their generosity, rather than being made to feel guilty for their success, or resentful of society's dependence on them. In January 2010, an English translation was published, titled, A Grasping Hand The Modern Democratic State Pillages Its Productive Citizens. In Forbes and in the winter 2010 issue of City Journal, Sloterdijk's 2010 book, Die Nemende Hand und die Gebende Seit, contains the texts that triggered the 2009-2010 welfare state dispute. <laughs> Sex and feminism In September 2016, Sloterdijk published the email novel The Skelling Project. The semi-autobiographical text contains a self-portrait of the author, appearing as Pierre Sloterdijk. Several of Sloterdijk's friends such as Thomas Macho, Siegfried Mauser and Michaela Benke figure in the novel in slight disguise. Together, so the plot goes, they draft a research proposal to the German research funding agency Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft on the evolution of the female orgasm. To make it look more profound and thus to impress the reviewers, the team fakes a connection of the issue to the metaphysics of the German idealist philosopher Friedrich Wilhelm Joseph Schelling. The reviewers, though, see through the mystification and turn down the application. Following the rejection, the team splits and each of its members takes his or her own course. While Sloterdijk's email novel about an academic hoax was rated mediocre in terms of literary quality, it came to be seen more as a political statement, specifically as an attack on gender mainstreaming in 21st century Germany. Critic Elke Schmitter, in a review article for Der Spiegel under the heading Woman as an Old Boy's Joke, described Sloterdijk's text as an anti-feminist pamphlet thinly veiled as a novel. In an interview with Suddutch Zeiting Sloterdijk defended himself against the charges and claimed his attitude towards women to be adoration rather than contempt. Honours and awards 1993, Ernst Robert Kirsch's Prize for Essay Writing 2000, Friedrich Marker Prize for Essay Writing 2001, Christian Kellerer Prize for the Future of Philosophical Thought 2005, Business Book Award for the Financial Times Deutschland 2005, Sigmund Freud Prize for Scientific Prose 2005, Austrian Decoration for Science and Art 
2006, Commander of the Ordre des Arts et des Lettres 2008, Lessing Prize for Criticism 2008, Cicero Prize 2008, International Mendelssohn Prize in Leipzig Category Social Responsibility 2009, BDA Award for Architectural Criticism 2013, Ludwig Born Prize Topic. Film appearances Marx Reloaded, Arte, April 2011 Topic. List of works Topic. Works in English translation Critique of Cynical Reason, translation by Michael Eldred, forward by Andreas Heisen, Minneapolis, University of Minnesota Press, 1988. ISBN 0-8166-1586-1 Thinker on Stage, Nietzsche's Materialism, translation by Jamie Owen Daniel, forward by Jochen Schulte Sass, Minneapolis, University of Minnesota Press, 1989. ISBN 0-8166-1765-1 Theory of the Postwar Periods, Observations on Franco-German Relations Since 1945, Translation by Robert Payne, Forward by Klaus Dieter Müller, Springer, 2008. ISBN 3-211-79913-3 Terror from the Air, Translation by Amy Patton, Los Angeles, Semiotext e. 2009. ISBN 1-58435-072-5 God's Zeal, The Battle of the Three Monotheisms, Polity PR, 2009. ISBN 978-0-7456-4507-0 Derrida, An Egyptian, Polity PR, 2009. ISBN 0-7456-4639-5 Rage and Time, translation by Mario Wenning, New York, Columbia University Press, 2010. ISBN 978-0-231-14522-0 Neither Son Nor Death, translation by Stephen Corcoran, Semiotext, e. 2011. ISBN 978-1-58435-091-0 Slaughterdijk answers questions posed by German writer Hans-Jürgen Heinrichs, commenting on such issues as technological mutation, development media, communication technologies, and his own intellectual itinerary. Bubbles, Spheres Vol. 1, Microspherology, translation by Wieland Hoban, Los Angeles, Semiotext, e. 2011. ISBN 1-58435-104-7 The Art of Philosophy, Wisdom as a Practice, translation by Karen Margolis, New York, Columbia University Press, 2012. ISBN 978-0-231-15870-1 You Must Change Your Life, translation by Wieland Hoban, Cambridge, Polity Press, 2013. ISBN 978-0-7456-4921-4 In the World Interior of Capital, Towards a Philosophical Theory of Globalization, translation by Wieland Hoban, Cambridge, Polity Press, 2013. ISBN 978-0-7456-4769-2 Nietzsche Apostle, Semiotext e, Intervention Series, translation by Steve Corcoran, Los Angeles, Semiotext e, 2013. ISBN 978-1-58435-099-6 Globes, Spheres Vol. 2, Macrospherology, translation by Wieland Hoban, Los Angeles, Semiotext e, 2014. ISBN 1-58435-160-8 Foams, Spheres Vol. 3, Plural Spherology, translation by Wieland Hoban, Los Angeles, Semiotext, e. 2016. ISBN 1-58435-187-X Not Saved, Essays After Heidegger, translation by Ian Alexander Moore and Christopher Turner, Cambridge, Polity Press, 2016. What Happened in the Twentieth Century, translation by Christopher Turner, Cambridge, Polity Press, 2018. Topic. Works in Spanish translation 
Estres y Libertad, Traducion de Paula Cuffer, Buenos Aires, Ediciones Godot, 2017. ISBN 978-987-4086-20-4 Original German titles Kritik der Zynischen Vernunft, 1983. Der Zauberbaum. Die Entstehung der Psychoanalyse im Jahr 1785, 1985. Der Denker auf der Bühne. Nietzsche's Materialismus, 1986. Thinker on Stage, Nietzsche's Materialism. Kopernikanische Mobilmachung und Talmaische Abrüstung, 1986. Zur Welt kommen, zur Sprache kommen. Frankfurter Vorlesungen, 1988. Eurotaoismus. Zur Kritik der Politischen Kinetik, 1989. Versprechen auf Deutsch. Reed über das Eigen Land, 1990. Weltfremdheit, 1993. Falls Europa erwacht. Gedanken zum Programm einer Weltmacht am Ende des Zeitalters seiner politischen Absence, 1994. Scheint im Denken, von Philosophie und Wissenschaft als Übung, Frankfurt am Main, Surkamp, 1995. I'm Selben Boot, Versich über die Hyperpolitik, Frankfurt am Main, Surkamp, 1995. Selb Ein Gesprach mit Carlos Oliveira, 1996. Der Stark Grund zu Semen zu sein. Erinnerungen und die Erfindung des Volkes, 1998. Sphären I, Blassen, Microsphorology, 1998. Spheres I. Sphären II, Globen, Macrosphorology, 1999. Spheres 2 Regeln für den Menschenpark. Ein Antwortschreiben zu Heidegger's Brief über den Humanismus, 1999. Die Verrichtung der Massen. Versich über Kulturkampf in der modernen Gesellschaft, 2000. Über die Verbesserung der guten Nachricht. Nietzsche's Funfits Evangelium. Read Zoom 100. Todestag von Friedrich Nietzsche, 2000. Nicht Gerite. Versich nach Heidegger, 2001. Die Zana und der Tod, Dialogische Untersuchungen mit Hans Jürgen Heinrichs, 2001. Tau von den Bermudas. Über Einige Regime der Fantasie, 2001. Luftbeben. Und den Wurzeln des Terrors, 2002. Sphären 3, Scham, Plural Spherology, 2004. Spheres 3. I'm Weltinnenraum des Kapitals, 2005. Was Za, Kert Wieder. Philosophisch Dialog, with Alain Finkielkraut from French, 2005. Zorn und Zeit. Politisch Psychologischer Versich, 2006. ISBN 3-518-41840-8 Der Aesthetische Imperative, 2007. Derrida ein Egypter, 2007. Godes Eifer. Vom Kampf der Drei Monotheismen, Frankfurt am Main, Insel, 2007. Theory der Nachkriegsaten, Surkamp, 2008. Du mut den Leben andern, Frankfurt am Main, Surkamp, 2009. Philosophische Temperamente von Platten bis Foucault, München, Diederichs, 2009. ISBN 978-3-424-35016-6 Scheintet im Denken, von Philosophie und Wissenschaft als Übung, Surkamp, 2010. Die Nemende Hand und die Gebende Seite, Surkamp, 2010. Die Schrecklichen Kinder der Nutzeit, Surkamp, 2014. Was Gesche im 20. Jarundert? Unterwegs zu einer Kritik der Extremistischen Vernunft, Surkamp, 2016. Topic references Topic External links Media related to Peter Sloterdijk at Wikimedia Commons Quotations related to Peter Sloterdijk at Wikiquote Peter Sloterdijk Website Peter Sloterdijk on IMDb The Grasping Hand, by Peter Sloterdijk, City Journal, Winter 2010 C. Stefan Lorenz Sorgner, In Search of Lost Cheekiness, An Introduction to Peter Sloterdijk's Critique of Cynical Reason, in, Tabula Rasa, 20 2003, The Operable Man, a Sloterdijk essay on the ethical state of gene technology Review of Bubbles, in, Los Angeles Review of Books Europe's Times and Unknown Waters, Cluj-Napoca, Brasavanu, Narcissa April 2009. The Narcissistic and the Cynical Attitudes, Two Identitary Masks, Giles Lipovetsky, Laurie Duvide. 
Essays sur l'individualisme contemporain and Peter Sloterdijk, Critique der Zynischen Vernunft Topics, Spheres February, March 2005 Interview Barthélemy on Sloterdijk and Stiegler Michel Weber, The Art of Philosophy, Critical Review, Cosmos and History, The Journal of Natural and Social Philosophy, Vol. 10, No. 2, 2014, pp. 327-333